Hi, this is David with David's Tutorials. In today's video, I think it's very important that you see this message that I conveyed when I made the graduation address to a high school class of 2000, 23 years ago. Let me give you a little bit of background about this graduation address and the class and the video before we get into it because that will help you understand where all this is coming from. First, both my son and my daughter were homeschooled from about the second and third grade all the way up through their graduation from high school. When they were in high school and some of junior high, they were members of the Coast Christian Home Educators Association. And this was quite a very good thing, we found out, because they were able to associate with kids of like minds instead of going to a public school where they were having their values shaped by other kids who were just wandering on the winds of no guidance. So we were very happy to have them in the Coast Christian Home Educators Association as they were homeschooled. The other thing to know is that my son Chad was the only one in this group of about 20 kids in his year group. So consequently, when he was in the graduating class of 2000, he was the only one to graduate that year. I want to let you know one more thing, and that is this video was recorded on an old Panasonic VHS recorder where you put the VHS tape right into the Panasonic recorder and turned it on and recorded it. The Panasonic video recorder was 20 years old when this video was made, and this video was made as of this recording 23 years ago. So it's old technology. It's like 40 years old today. And I will ask you to please put up with some of the bad video. The audio came through okay, and I was able to process it and make it a lot more understandable. But the important part here is the second part of the video. This first part of the video is some background and some memories, and the second part is the message itself. Now, I believe this message is so important, I wanted to bring it to you in this vlog post. And if you agree it's as important as I think it is, then I'm going to request you to share it as far as you can, as wide as you can. Here's the video. This is about it. We're coming down the home stretch. My grandma's got tissues. <laughs> Parents, how many of you have looked at a youth, perhaps one about the age of today's high school graduates, you shake your head, sigh, and say, oh man, if only I could be that age again, knowing where I am now. I've been You've been there. And Chad's that age now. High school graduates are that age now. And while you and I can't turn the clock back, we can certainly appreciate the quantity of learning that someone this age still has yet to do. All too soon, it's going to be time to let them go. All too soon, the time is going to be on us to set them free. Let them live their own lives. We'll see what kind of job we did then. We will live in the joy of knowing what great adventures await them, will live in the sphere that we may not have prepared them well enough. I recognize I don't have much daddy time left. So I got to thinking, if I could teach Chad just one thing, just, just one more thing before he spreads his wings and takes off on his own, what would that one thing be? Let me pose that question to the other parents here. If you could teach your own children, or any other child for that matter, just one thing before they leave the nest, what would that one thing be? Thanks. I got thinking about that. And this led me to think back upon Chad's life. I started remembering. I remember the time that, that he and Sheldon jumped out of a wrapped Christmas present to surprise Mom. I remember a year of piano lessons. I remember years in gymnastics. I remember Chad playing soccer with other four-year-olds where they all get together and blob around the ball and kick each other in the shins <laughs> until the ball pops out and then they run to the ball and go do it again. <laughs> I remember t-ball and I remember art classes and family trips. And I remember 
chap writing the stone dinosaur in Indianapolis at the Children's Museum. I remember the years of, of Boy Scouts, camping trips, and summer camps, and culminating in Eagle Scout, the, the privilege we had when Sam was there as well, before we knew who each other were. I remember years of trumpet lessons endured with stoic patience. <laughs> years as a, a lifeguard at the YMCA, and hours and hours of homeschooling, and I just have Nothing but awe and admiration for all homeschooling parents, knowing what I know about it. I remember the, the wooden sword fights in the backyard and the video movie making with neighbor friends. I remember sneaking in at 2 o'clock in the morning to play computer games and, and shutting the door and reading books by flashlight hiding behind the bed. 2 o'clock in the morning. All of this, I remember it with fondness, but I also remember it with with a certain degree of frustration. And the frustration comes that through all of these activities, all the involvement, all of the joy of being a child and, and growing up, it seemed to me there was a certain degree of boredom. <laughs> and it, I mean, life is okay, I guess, and, and, and kind of fun, but it just, there was no focus, nothing headed towards, and as an adult, perhaps I lost that, that freedom of not really having the goal that's existing for a while, and this is great for all kids, but as a parent, it was kind of frustrating. Well, geez, why doesn't he find something that's really universal? Nothing at that particular time, for the first 15 years of his life, it really caught his attention and held it. But then, Several things happened all close together that changed things. I believe the first thing was that Chad became aware that there are a large number of very strong leaders in society and community and business, very strong leaders that are also strong Christians. Being a strong leader, being a leader in society, does not mean you can't be a strong Christian. The second thing that began this change process is that Chad began to focus on contemporary Christian music. Kids love music, but if you're a Christian and you're listening to, to pop music, there's a disconnect there and something that just grates. And then when you discover contemporary Christian music, you've got modern music, you've got pop music, you've got what kids they call good music, but yet it's still Christian. Got some concepts there. And the third thing that happened to bring about the change process, I picked up my old guitar and started learning how to play it. The candle was lit. The candle became a blowtorch, and of course the blowtorch became a bonfire. And remembering all of this, this chance life up till now, I found what I wanted to tell him, the one thing that I want to tell him. And that one thing, and this is for you, Chad, and this is for everybody here in the category of if the shoe fits, make good decisions. Okay? That's the one thing if I had to tell you before you graduate, make good decisions. Because both here on earth and for eternity, your life will be determined by the decisions you make. Examples. Faith. As a decision. You don't just decide to believe in God, you decide to believe God, and there's a difference. You believe God when he tells you that he loves you. You believe God when he tells you he wants you to be more Christ-like. You believe in what he tells you when he's been tied, to honor your father and mother, to love your neighbor as yourself. Once you make this decision, which is the most important decision you've ever made in your life, the entire tenor of your life, your behavior is now set out for you for the rest of your life. Another decision that you can make, an example of decisions that shape your life is the decision to prioritize, to decide what's important in your life. Probably the second most important decision you can make. In all aspects of your life, you decide what is important, and then you act on that decision. Stephen Covey, Seven Habits Guy, says, keep first things first. 
God says, out of the fullness of the heart, the mouth speaks. Listen to what comes out of your mouth, and you'll know what's in your heart. But is that what's important? So if you decide what's important, then you'll have your heart full. Where your treasure is, there also will your heart be. You decide what's important, you know where the treasure lies. Once you know where the treasure lies, that's where your heart will be. But if you kind of make this decision first, decide what's important. Decide where your treasure is. Another decision. Believe it or not, success is a decision. People are where they are in life today entirely because of decisions they have made. You will be where you happen to be five years from now, ten years from now, based entirely on the decisions you make between now and then. And one of those decisions I submit to you is that you need to decide to be successful. God has given you a passion. This is a wonderful gift. A gift that's not given you. Maybe perhaps it's there, but nobody, not everybody takes advantage of it. This is tremendous, and I wish you every success with this passion. But aren't there other areas where we need to ask ourselves, am I as successful as I should be? Am I successful as a Christian? Am I successful in having a career? Now, right now, career, gee, what is this? I was a lifeguard for a while. Was that a career? No. I was a student. Well, that was a career for a while. You're going to be a student as a career. You have a job. Is that a career? Temporary career. You can decide to be successful even at a temporary job. Can you decide to be successful as a spouse, as a parent, mm -hmm. as a mentor, as a teacher? Yes, to all of these things. Success is a decision. Now, the bad thing about deciding to be successful is that usually when you decide to be successful, it means work. Well, uh, most of us tend to try to avoid unnecessary work, don't we? Yeah, yeah. But along with that, uh, it seems that we tend to avoid some necessary work as well. And when that happens, we wind up being less than successful. Success is a decision, and it comes with a commitment to put in the work necessary to be successful. Okay? There are many other decisions that will affect the way your life rolls out from here on in. Love is a decision. Everything from romantic love to familial love to brotherly love and Christian love, love for your fellow man, it's all a decision. You will decide, I love my fellow man, and it will govern your behavior. How you act is governed by your decisions. Forgiveness is a decision. Decide to forgive somebody. Happiness is a decision. These are all decisions that you will make. Final thing I want to leave you with about decisions is that decisions don't make themselves. They don't sneak up when you bite you on the ankle when you're not looking, and you run away from them, and they're going to be unmade. If you fail to make decisions that you need to make, you are in terrible danger. At best, you're in danger of having your life's direction blown about willy-nilly on the directions of chance, and you never know where you're going to wind up, and at worst, your life will wind up being a tool for Satan. Because it's been truly said, idle hands are the devil's workshop. Absolutely true. Idle hands are the result of failing to make a decision you should have made. It's a product of the decision. So, Chad, if I had just one thing to teach you, when you spread your wings and fly away, it's this make good decisions. Yeah. Gather the information. Think about the decisions you need to make. Make them without delay. Life depends. Okay, Jeff, just to. This is the valedictorian of the class of 2000. <laughs> the, the prom king, and as Chad said, also the prom queen, why not? <laughs> Nothing in there that contradicts you, uh, it's just a joke. <laughs> When I digitized this video, it was about two years ago, that was the first time I had heard it after it was first recorded back in the year 2000. And 
it struck me that this is a very on point video to everybody at any age, at any time. If you agree that this is an important message that everybody else needs to hear, I'm going to ask you to go ahead right now and click that share button and share it either in an email or share it on social media or share it as widely as you can because it is a very important message. The decisions you make right now impact the rest of your life and it doesn't matter where you are. If you are in the later years as I am, you can change where you're headed just by changing your decisions. Your decisions are the most important thing. In any case, that's what I wanted to share with you. Now let me give you a little bit of an example of what I was able to do with that video recording. I want to give you a short clip here of the video before I did the processing on it. Here it is. This is about it. We're coming down the home stretch. And here's the same clip after I was processing it. This is about it. We're coming down the home stretch. I hope you agree I was able to make it a lot more understandable. That's all I've got for you in this video. If you give me that thumbs up, then YouTube will know they should recommend this video to other watchers, and I will know that you liked it, and it will encourage me to keep making these videos. If you're already a subscriber, I thank you so much. I appreciate every single one of you. And if you're not a subscriber, why not go ahead right now, click that subscribe button and then the bell icon. YouTube will let you know by email whenever I post another video, which I've been doing twice a week for a couple of months now. And if you don't mind, leave me a comment down in the comment section down there and let me know what you thought of this video, what you think of the content of this video and that particular philosophy that your decisions you make right now are the most important thing that you need to pay attention to. That's all I've got. I want you to have a wonderful day. Take care and we'll see you in the next video.